and good evening everyone to our The Wasted Hour podcast. This is Martin and for this episode I met with Sana, better known as DJ Lafleur, in Berlin Neukölln on the release day of her new Aphelion EP on her own label Power Plant Records. We talked about her shift from working as a pharmacist to being a full-time DJ and producer, moving from Sweden to Berlin, taking care of yourself and of course her new record. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. So, perfect. Yeah. First of all, welcome, Thank Sana, you. Um, to the Wasted Hour podcast. Actually, like the first real episode that we're doing here. I'm happy to have Thanks you with us. Thanks for having me. Um, happy release day, of course. Thank today you. is your, uh, the day that your new EP is dropping yeah. on your own power plant label. And how does it, how does it feel for you? It feels great. Uh, so today is like the release of the vinyl, yeah. and the digital will be next week. Uh, so yeah, finally. It's been a long time in the making, so I'm happy it's finally out. Cool. I want to go a little bit back in history, because, um, because I read your bio, and I think that's quite interesting. Um, you grew up in Sweden, in Orobro, yes. right? Did <laughs> I spell it right? Yeah, or? you did actually, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. What was your? First, how did you get in contact there with um, electronic music? Uh, I didn't. I must say, I did not get so much in contact with electronic music in my hometown because I grew up listening to a lot of indie rock and pop, okay. like oh. Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Junior, like Swedish bands like Kent. Um, so I was like a music nerd, but it was not like electronic music. And maybe there was a scene there, but not that I know of and actually like to this date I don't really know that it has been like a big place for electronic music. I know of course like there was another small city quite close to Örebro Jön shopping whatever you know there were some people that was like really into it mm -hmm. <coughs> then the scene happened but in Örebro it was more like um, other Swedish famous bands like Millenkollen. Yeah. It's more like, like that kind the, of yeah. The skate punk, yeah they were yeah. pretty big there. Um, cool. So electronic music was actually late like after I moved from Örebro. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would say like maybe or like when end of my Örebro time, like you know, I started listening a bit to um, French, you know, the French wave. Like you know, of course, like Daft Punk's homework. That album like was huge for me. Um, but no, not really. That like there growing up, there was not really a scene. Okay. But where did you move after? So after I went to first to Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I started to go out to a lot of gay clubs actually, which had like a lot of good music. Um, so that was like, you know, of course I always went out dancing a lot, but like that was maybe I went out more dancing to like club music. And then I went to Uppsala where I studied pharmacy for uh, a bit more than four years uh, to my master in uh, pharmacy. So that's like and even then you know like as a student students are not the best <laughs> it's more about the party not so much about the music maybe but uh, there was this thing about me always wanted to choose the music and always wanted to share the music i love for my friends yeah that's cool but because for me too like when i started going out with electronic music it was just like the music i was going out with but yeah. then i got into it more and more and then I really like started listening to it sober too, and liked it like too when and when not going out. So yeah. that was a was a cool uh, transition. Yeah. But how did you make the step from just like sharing it with your friends to like DJing? Uh, somehow, like I always had this like secret dream of that I wanted to DJ. You know, like of course you went to even when you are in school when you're a kid, you went to these like school dances, and there's always like this person, mainly guy, standing playing records and. I always had like I always knew what I liked and I always like really wanted to hear the music I liked so somehow like that was like pretty early in me that I wanted to like I, re I wanted to try it out and then when I in my studies uh, in Uppsala um, a boyfriend of mine he was like hobby dating at parties so then I was like wow can't you like can't you show me how to do this you know and he was like not so much up for that. <laughs> Um, but then I went to my hometown back again because I was writing my uh, C uh, essay first and then also my D, my master. And I was doing like projects at the hospital in the, my hometown. And then I started like doing things again that I haven't been doing for a long time, like a lot of creative stuff that like during my studies I took a break from because there was so much with the studies. 
like I started dancing again, I started taking singing lessons and it was like in this connection where I actually like started playing um, records and I met this guy who was holding, who was having DJ courses and he actually showed me like how, you know, like, okay, this is how you do it. Yeah. And that's, I bought my equipment, I put it on the little kitchen table where I had like, was renting the flat and yeah. And since then, like, I, I was like really happy when actually like, because I think like I didn't know, I didn't know anyone who was playing and somehow maybe it's like, this can be a bit stereotypical, but as a girl or I didn't really know that, you know, I thought it was maybe more uh, complicated than it is. It's not brain surgery. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's more about the getting that introduction. Cool. Did you have like a role model like for a DJ when you wanted no, to do that? No, not really, no. No, I mean of course like there's like a lot of amazing artists within electronic music but um, i never been a person that has like a lot of idols or role models in that way. Maybe. Yeah, that's good. But were, do you remember like the first stuff that you wanted to play? Like how did you get deeper into like like knowing the artists and like the songs and like I mean like that all already came from like when I was younger you mm -hmm. know because I searched a lot for music and but then I was more into like obscure indie or pop and rock but so that was always a thrill you know to search for music and to find that like amazing track so um, of course like that's a great skill to have <laughs> when you're a DJ because one of the biggest part is being a selector um, so it was also like of course then when I started playing records, then I also wanted to learn properly mixing. So then I got more into dance music too, because if you're gonna beat mix, you know, it's like, okay, hip hop, R&B, or like electronic music, rock and pop is not really beat mixing in that sense. So, so then, uh, you know, I went with my newfound love for that kind of genre. And, uh, cool. Mm. Um, but you also also said that you finished your pharmacy studies. Mm -hmm. Like, did you also work in that in that field? Yes, I did. Um, I finished my studies so like around 2004, I think. Mm -hmm. And then for a few years, um, I was working as a pharmacist too. Yeah, so I was like, I remember like one of the first club nights I had. I, I was working as a pharmacist in Uppsala, which is this tiny little city. Um, outside of Stockholm, like 40 minutes of Stockholm. Um, and, you know, hours was like, I started working at 8 in the morning and I had this like Sunday club uh, in Stockholm that went at least until 3 o'clock. So I remember like every Monday morning, I was that tired. And I, you know, everybody's like, oh, you look a bit tired. I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. Because <laughs> I didn't really want to tell them that like I'd been out and like playing records all night. So, but then like, you know, I had a very supportive boss. Like he had like, great plans for me, like he put in a lot of work and effort, but he also knew that I had this big passion. So there was a thing called the free year in Sweden that happened, uh, which was actually amazing because you can get like up to a year off and the government would pay a certain amount of your salary and an unemployed person would go in and take your job. Is it like a sabbatical yeah, thing a from, bit, the, but from the... Yeah, but not, yeah, a little bit, but still, like, you would get paid part of your salary, and an unemployed person, like, that was the whole idea that, like, we cool. get the opportunity to uh, get a job. So, yeah, it's like a really nice thing for, for both ways. So, um, I did that, and end of those months, I went to Berlin to, like, okay, I want to focus on the music productions, I want to, like, have inspiration, and I really would like to try to make this work, kind of thing. Because at that time I was playing like, you know, almost every weekend, but like mostly in Sweden, of course. Um, and then also like having my full time day job, which was, yeah, a lot. Did you have like a plan in mind when you came to Berlin? Like, this is how you want to make it happen? Did you have any no, connection? I was more like, I want to lock myself into this because there was a guy here in Berlin who booked me for a festival that he was doing in Berlin and also in Sweden. He was like half Swedish, half German. Uh, so I told him, you know what, well, I'm thinking to go to Berlin for a couple of months, like, do you know any place? And he was like, I'm going to Australia for three months, you can borrow my flat, I'm like, you can rent my flat. I was like, that is amazing. So I basically like, I didn't really know anyone. I knew some DJs, Vincenzo, like was releasing to the Sus and Poker Flat, who was uh, playing at the club that I was resident in Stockholm. So, you know, I, was, I knew maybe like one or two people here basically but it was more for me it was more like get away from the everyday life and going somewhere where you don't know anyone because it gives you a lot more of like space for minds for like creativityness when you don't have people pulling you and 
you have to go there, you have to show up for this, and uh, that was actually what I was more looking forward to moving to Berlin. Yeah. Um, do you remember the first club you went to in Berlin? When you uh, were here? Yes, because I was here before I moved here. Okay, uh, I yeah. visited the city like twice. And I, the first time I was here, I really fell in love with Berlin. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was so special and underground and just this like, I mean, this was 12 years ago. and was like this vibe of like, you know, everything is possible. And uh, yeah, it was just like, it was like this mystery about it. And uh, something new and fun would always happen if you would go out. So then actually, I don't know, I know like, so the first night I had a friend that then played in Sweden. So it was, I was here with a friend and he took us out on this like round. We went to Watergate, weekend was happening at that, you know, at that time. We went to Club de Vision. I mean like we basically went to like, you know, Bergkamp and we went to like everywhere. Yeah. So like that was like, was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so like I got a really good tour of the. Yeah, it's quite it's like. quite unique the club culture yeah, here, especially sure. when you come here. Yeah, that's what I also recognize when I go into like um, a foreign country, yeah. and I, and then recognize now it's like here you have parties that go like all day yeah. and like everything and like even in New York like club closes at like two and I was like yeah, yeah it's I'm a very not, different story. I'm yeah. not used to that. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> when you grew up like in Germany and the club scene here. Yeah, I can imagine. But did you also like? Um, start at the same time we were DJing uh, with your own productions or was it like no far later? I mean I always wanted to I would have like the urge to make my own music because I guess like that's one of the reasons you know you hear a track or maybe you feel like oh I want to change this or when you mix it with somebody else I would like to do this too so for sure and that was also something I did start in Sweden like um, I went to course in logic actually like an evening course when I was but that was why I wanted to go to Berlin and why I wanted to have the break because I felt like I never had time for it so it was really hard for me to find a time with a full-time job like playing every weekend um, so but then like when I went here that was like kind of on mission to like get into that and uh, I rented a studio in like an old space uh, weird <laughs> space in um, Oh, was that on? Uh, oh, it's in Prenzlauerberg or like Friedrich and Prenzlauerberg. I can't remember the street now, but okay. it was like this complex with. Uh, it's actually close to where. Oh, it was a club. It's not this. It was another club who was there before that is closed now. Oh, um, anyway, but you know there was like be weird. There was somebody making a fire in the basement. There were like weird people walking around there. <laughs> You're always a bit scared when you would go there. But that was like Berlin at that time, and it was like it was everything was very exciting. Cool. Um, do you remember the first moment when you did like your own production and you listened to it like one day later and thought like, oh, this is actually, I'm actually good at this? Uh, well, that took some time. Sometimes <laughs> I still, you know, it, I think that's always something you can improve with. But yes, I mean, like, I think like, you know, I was making tracks and I also was making music together with a friend of mine before. And I think when the first thing that I really felt that like, wow, I really liked this, as in like, I thought it was special, that was actually the Flowerhead track. Tracks before that was like, hey, you know. Um, but that like was something that meant a lot for me, that first track that I finished. Yeah. But you decided like to found your own label for the... Um, well, no, first, first, I mean, that was also a thing like, you know, I wanted everything. I wanted like, you know, I want to be DJ, I want to be a producer, I want to have my own record label. And I know I met Ralph Coleman early days in Berlin who, who run Mobili. And I was like, I want to start a label, you know? He was like, oh my God, don't do that. It's like a full-time work. You're not going to earn any money. Like, no, no, that's a bad idea. And basically like, everybody's advice was to me. It was like, no, like, don't do that. It's just, you're not going to earn any money. I was like, I don't want to do it for that. I want to do it because there's other reasons for having this like, creative freedom. So first, of course, I sent Flowerhead to uh, labels that I liked, but nobody wanted it. So then I thought, like, hey, maybe, you know what, this is maybe the time that I start my own label. So that I did, yeah. Cool, because like the first thing that appealed to me, because I was introduced to the Flowerhead record, mm -hmm. and then I dug into it, I was like, yeah, you, like with the own artwork and like everything, yeah. and then I think like Jesper's EP yeah. just came out, yeah. and I was like, yeah, this is really like new to me, yeah. like everything, and I really, I really dug it, like this was really, Thank you. Well, special the tracks and the tracks were really good. That's one that was around like 2010, 10, 10, yeah, 11. 11. Yeah. yeah, around yeah. the time when I first got, yeah. got introduced to you. 
But what was the, um, how did you proceed after like your first record? You were already playing in clubs here in Berlin? Yeah, or? I mean actually the funny thing was that when I moved here, uh, already at that time I felt that like everybody's an, an artist here. You know, I'm not even gonna try to get a gig. I'm just gonna go here, you know, have some creative space. Uh, but then I think it was like, yeah, it was actually the first week. So like one, this one person that I knew here, he was like, okay, let's come to Lime and Bar, we're gonna have a drink. And I went there and we're sitting having a drink and then there's like this guy coming up to him saying like, okay, so, you know, whatever, next month, yeah, you're gonna come play at Weekend Club. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna come. Yeah, okay, great. That was like, you know, and that was the owner of Weekend Club. Uh, and uh, my friend was like, oh, this is Sanna Lafleur. She's like an amazing DJ. I play with her in Stockholm. I was like, oh, hi. He was like, okay, so maybe you don't wanna do the warm up. I was like, yeah, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> And at that time, like Weekend Club was like uh, a very cool club in Berlin, and um, uh, he was like, "Okay, great. So yeah, let's do that then." And I remember I went into the bathroom. And I was like, <laughs> "You know, <laughs> you were, like so excited, excited. Yeah. so cool, yeah. so excited that I like, you know, after week in Berlin, I got this gig at this super cool club. And the gig, like, in the end, I remember I was playing only vinyl at that time. I go in there, thinking, of course, that I'm gonna do the warm up. Uh, but when I arrive, Vicenza was like, "No, I would do the warm up. You can just play." You can play the main slot. I was like, okay, but like I bought, you know, bought my records for like a warm up. He's like, oh, it's gonna be fine. I'm like, okay. So like he plays the warm up, then I play for two hours, and then like two and a half hours, three hours. I was like, where is he? You know, has anybody seen him? Oh, I think he went home. You can just continue playing. So that was like my reality check of like how Berlin nightlife and things were there. So basically, I ended up playing like. God knows how many hours to like the early mornings on like those warm up records. I was just besides, so, you know. Yeah. So, but that was like a real uh, okay. Like that really learned me something. That like that's kind of what you ex or can be expecting in Berlin. You never really know what's gonna happen and um, how long you're gonna play and uh, yeah. But that sounds cool. For me, it sounds like it all happened like in an organic way. Yeah, in a way. Some, yeah, yeah, exactly. And like. Um, yeah, and then like, yeah, I started to get in gigs and, you know, even if it wasn't planned. And I was, of course, like, I asked to stay six more months. You know, I called my boss at my old job there and he said, like, sure, are you coming back? I'm like, yes. And then after he called me out, are you coming back? I'm like, no. <laughs> so then I decided to stay in Berlin, like, after nine months or something like that. Although I maybe knew, you know, that I would, but uh, it was a bigger step for me to take. Yeah. So, yeah. Was there a certain moment that she knew, like, I'm not going back? Like, I or, think maybe was it a, I, Or was it more a process? Of? It was a process, but I, like, maybe it was a process of, like, you know, daring to take the decision to actually, like, quit my very safe, like, job and my, you know, my good career there to do full on music. But at the same time, I think I already, always knew that, like, you know, I didn't, I can do that later. Yeah. So I knew that I wanted to do music. Yeah. Did you ever look back and be like, "Oh, I regret this decision"? No, <laughs> no. no. Yeah, that's. No. But it's so great to hear. Yeah. To, no, uh, I don't. And at the same time, you know, like I was reading actually when I was at home. Now, it's like the the top five, like the ten top ten jobs that like are now like, uh, yeah, they're searching for a lot of people in those like, and that is one of them are like apothecary. You know, so I was like, great, I will have a job if I go back. You know, so. And I still have like in contact with my boss, and you know he's like happy to see goes are great for you. Let me know if you want to come back. <laughs> so I feel like um, yeah, I, I I don't I'm not worried like, and that feels actually like a good thing. Like I have my degree, I have that somehow and that experience, and um, yeah. Yeah, perhaps it also allows you to like uh, to take a bigger risk because totally. you know that you have like a safe thing that you can go back to. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, yeah. I'm just asking so because like, I, had, I was at the same point like when I finished like studying law with yeah. the bar exam and just go into a whole other field. But for me, looking back, it was the right choice to finish it like my studies just to have like a plan B option. Yeah. Like nowadays. No. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I like that. I'm very happy I did so. And I think that's also like sometimes my recommendation if people, you know, like they're then start, but really don't want any music. I was like, finish your studies because this also teaches you something and you learn something even if you're not going to work with that like doing the studies i think that's also yeah an experience perhaps it makes you like um go about things more structured like too that's what yeah. what, it, what it's for me yeah. and like also like the work ethos you know yeah. like from, from studying i'd <laughs> yeah, be like yeah sure. <laughs> i'm used to it now right? yeah cool 
But how um, did it um, go on and, uh, after that? Because I remember there was then a power plant, a power plant label night at yeah. Farbfenster and stuff right. like that. So yeah. for a, were you there? Yeah, I was yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good time. <laughs> No, so like, you know, like, okay, I want to do a label night. And I think actually the first one maybe was my birthday party together with my agent at that time. And I remember we had like black and white balloons. Uh, we did a few there, but, um, and yeah, you know, and also I did some in Sweden and like, like Power Plant, I really started that for like the reasons I said to you earlier that like, I wanted to have like this full creative freedom. Like I wanted to be able to decide 100% what music it's gonna be on. I wanted to, you know, also when I started a label, there was this like kind of recession time where people mostly was doing like a stamp. That was like the trend then, you know, but I was like, I always love beautiful vinyl covers. Like, you know, when I go in a record shop, if I see a cover that I think is really beautiful, like I want to buy the record just because, you know, I want to have it at home. Yeah, totally. It's so still the, it's still to the first that. impression that yeah. you get from something. Yeah. And uh, when I discovered like Olaf Hayek and his amazing paintings, I was like, wow, you know. And I called him and I was like, could I use one of your paintings for my covers? And he's like, yeah, maybe, you know. So, and then it all worked out. So I think that was a big part and like a big fun for me to search for this like illustrations or illustrators that I wanted to do something for my label to. And um, um, yeah, and part of that would do label light, but also a lot of label nights I did like um, installations, like especially for once in a few in Sweden. So I had, you know, I was working with a stage designer or like with other creatives. So like they did sound installations or different installations that, <laughs> just um yeah that just like kind of like was on the power plant theme yeah. so uh, yeah did you have someone like to advise you on that kind of stuff like running a label or was it all no learning? it was learning by doing yeah learning by doing wow yeah. and then like next thing i know is that you became a resident at uh, watergate yeah or it was this or am i missing a yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> a but party. i mean like that happened eventually um no but it was also because i think that you know i was playing around in the city and i remember i was at dinner one time like ian Pooley was a good friend of mine and he still is a good friend of mine and um yeah uli uh, who is one of like the owners of watergate Came by, yeah, we should really meet. Like he said that like almost a year. He was like, yeah, we should meet. Like you should come by the office. I was like, yeah, okay, maybe they want me to do a remix or something, or you know. And then we finally got to speak, and he was like, well, we're gonna start an agency, and I, you know, I because I was also starting actually to do nights there. A friend of mine called Michelle Owen, who's also from Australia, she. Uh, she was like, why don't we do a night together, you know? And I was like, where we want to do it? She was like, oh, I'd love to do it water game. I was like, do you think they're going to say yes? You know, she was like, let's call and ask. <laughs> so we presented this concept, you know, we wanted to do label nights. We wanted to book um, women and um, on Wednesday nights, like on the water floor. And they thought it was a great idea. So that's how it started. Of course, they, they heard me playing. Um, and then they asked, yeah, if I wanted to become a resident and join their agency that they just started. And cool. Was this... Um, like the point where it took off because like I think from a certain point on like you played like all over the world like yeah I think for sure I mean like Watergate like definitely helped me a lot you know to get my name out there more uh, um, because they also did showcases which I could join like all over the world and Watergate of course is like been seen as like one of the world's best clubs for many years so of course like if you play there regularly and I got the opportunity to play with a lot of amazing artists and uh, I also released uh, music on their label. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, one track was called Night Flow, and Kenny Larkin did a remix, which was amazing. <laughs> so, you know, so that, uh, yeah, so that tied me in there. And yeah, cool. Um, then, like, after I think like seven releases on Power Plant, like, it was from, for a time, it was a little more quiet yeah. uh, for Power Plant. Yeah. But that was because I just, um, I, I think like last year when I actually didn't release anything, it was like a year with a lot of changes. I needed to like set new structures to, you know, the people I work with and try to figure out really what I want to do with the label, how I wanted to proceed. And uh, yeah, so I kind of needed to take that time to like figure out, you know, and sometimes you really want to push things, but sometimes times really take time, uh, things take time. And I think what Pablo was never about like, quantity was also about quality and that's also like you know the label been around for like eight years now I think but we still only have like nine releases you know so maximum one release per year and like 
It's just because I don't want to release something unless I really, really like it. Um, but now I'm actually like gonna put some more time into like um, also searching for more music that fits the label and to maybe do two or three releases per year. But I would never do more because that's not the kind of uh, that's not like the purpose of the label. It's more like to showcase things that I really like. It's the same with the artworks. You know, they always took time, and sometimes that was the reason why things got delayed. Or, and I also did like this. Um, I started out like as a merchandise project, but it went to like a eight-piece like capsule uh, fashion collection that I did. So, I think like Power Plant always been this like breeding ground for these different projects I want to do. Yeah. Will it um, now with the new release go into a new sound direction too? I don't think it's going to be that much new sound. I mean, like, I think, of course, like, the, the sound has evolved, like, I, you know, with me or with the world. <laughs> but um, it will always be tracks that, are, like, are special to me, that I really, really like. And sometimes I feel like, no, they don't fit anywhere else. I want to have them for Power Plant or so, yeah. So the new record comes out today on vinyl yeah. and will be available a week from now on the 15th. Yeah. Um, digitally too. Like, what were the first reactions to it when you showed it to people or when you played it live? No, actually, because since like, especially Hunting Grounds, that track I have been, I had with me for quite some time in my record bag. So, and it's always went down really well playing it out. So, you know, I, I had always had a good feeling about it. And that's also, of course, Lots of fun uh, when people like it and appreciate it, and yeah, it's like actually a lot of people now because it's been premiered and <clears throat> that people get in touch and say that they really like it. So I'm happy about that. Cool. So, um, like I said before, you started to traveling a lot and you play like all over the world. Um, I think that um, when I saw a documentary the other day um, that. Like, as a DJ, you travel a lot and you just go like to a party and then you're off to the next party as well. How do you find time to relax and calm a little bit down? Um, that's the hard part, at least for me, because first of all, I love to work. Like, I like to be busy and it's like, it's, for me, it's more to make an effort to like relax than to like work, yeah. <laughs> because I really enjoy it. But uh, I think that's also the, <clears throat> the beginning of this year. I got a bit sick because I didn't take care and I didn't relax between the gigs. So this year, actually, like that's one of my main focus to stay, like um, keep trying to really find the balance. Uh, I also have a daughter, of course. So since I got her, that's also something to help me keep like a schedule, which I really like, which is like one of the <laughs> benefits because she goes up 6:30 every morning. This morning I was very tired, but it's like it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So you have something to relate to and that sometimes you don't need, you know, I don't know, it's good. It can also help you get out of your own head because you don't have time to <laughs> sit around and think too much. So, yeah, uh, I try to like eat healthy um, and then also like, yeah, <laughs> sleep as much as I can and, um, you know, just take care of myself as much as possible now when between the gigs, because on the weekends there's not much of sleep or taking care of. Yeah. How many gigs do you play per week? Um, most of it's most two. Yeah. Next weekend is four, but that's like normally it's not four per weekend. Normally it's like two. That's normal. Okay, and do you know how many flights are you like? Yeah, so then like a normal weekend is three, you know, yeah. minimum. It depends if you have a stopover, maybe it's more. And I think like that's the part of the job that, for me, uh, makes me tired or like feel like yeah that it drains me a bit so you've played like all around the world i think now like there are a lot of um, countries but still like if you would be at the airport and you would have um, been given a free flight is there something mm. you would we would go i mean before i would have said india because i always want to go to india but i was in india now <laughs> last year <laughs> so oh my god there's so many amazing places i think i would like to go at the moment where I would like to go, somewhere warm and sunny, so I can have like a vacation in that connection. Yeah. Um, gosh, I don't know. I can't think of it now, but actually where I really like to go, this sounds maybe very boring, but that is like Sweden. Yeah. And uh, the place where I grew up in the countryside, because that is like, that is real vacation for me. Sometimes where you go somewhere for a job, it's not 100% relaxing but um, 
Sweden for me is like one of my favorite places to travel because also I don't live here now, so you know, you get a bit more when you're not there, you miss it more. Also too, because you don't have, you, you're not forced to like explore anything, you, yeah. because you already know it and yeah. you can take some time off. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely. Cool, so thank you so much for thank the interview. You. I wish you all the best for your new record. Thank like you all much. the best for your health too. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see you play in Hamburg on the, on the 16th. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.